guys, welcome back to the second part of the Key Cloak series. Um, the first part, as you saw, was just uh, how to pull a Key Cloak image and run it as a container um, and it being connected to a local H2 database that comes with the Key Cloak container. In this second part, we're going to show how to run Key Cloak but have it connect to an external database. And in this example, I'm going to actually show it being connected to a Postgres SQL database um, in AWS RDS. Okay, so I'm over here now in AWS and I'm going to be creating a new database here. So just click on Create Database. Here we're going to go ahead and just create a Post -SQL, Postgres SQL database. We'll do a dev test and we'll just uh, set these options as you see that I'm doing. We'll set the DB instance identifier as such here. And we're going to create the master password to be associated with the Postgres master user. Here we're going to change some of these options just so that it's not so costly for me. And we're going to give it a public access. Um, so it'll be an, basically accessible from anywhere. Here we're going to actually give it the database name. And let's just set some of these features. Um, set them as such, basically disabling them, just so again, don't incur too much cost with this. All right, then go ahead and create a database. Um, obviously, you can use a free version if you have one, um, but I will be stopping this database while I'm not using it, so that should help reduce the cost that I'll have. So that 116 won't be as much for me. But as mentioned, you can actually um, just have your own Postgres database or MySQL database or any other database just running on your own personal machine. I'm just making one here uh, running in an external site uh, just to kind of show you just how it works. So now that that's set, uh, I want you to notice this endpoint over here because we're going to use this as part of the uh, connection parameters to um, you know connect from Keycloak to Postgres. And over here, we're going to actually edit the inbound rules to just include the host PC's IP. And here we're going to log into the Postgres SQL database from our command line. So we're essentially connecting from my, my Linux host machine, uh, for, I should say my Linux um, Ubuntu virtual image. And I am going to be connecting to the Postgres database that I just connected or created. And I'm going to just set these, um, do a couple of updates to the Keycloak DB that we just created. And I'm, one of them is basically going to be giving all the privileges to the database Keycloak DB to the Postgres user. Now, here I have this uh, endpoint file, which uh, you're going to see here actually has some of the configuration parameters that are needed for Keycloak to actually connect to the Postgres SQL database that I have in AWS. So one, we have the DB vendor, which is just uh, basically setting to Postgres. The DB adder is going to be the endpoint that we saw in AWS um, page after we created the database. The DB port is going to be 5432. That's the default port that Postgres SQL databases use to you know, connect to, to the server. And the actual database name is Keycloak DB. If you recall, that's what something that we set when creating the Postgres database. And then the DB user and the DB password, uh, basically that's the user, the master user. And then uh, the password is a password that I set also while creating the, um, you know, finishing creating the PostgreSQL database instance. Okay, now to run Keycloak pointing to the PostgreSQL database, we're going to do the whole, do the same command, sudo docker run with the port mapping and then specifying the key cloak version. 
but we're going to add this um, other runtime parameter called nfile, and we're going to specify that endpoint text file that I just showed you with all of the Postgres endpoints uh, values. And after entering this whole line and just hitting return, then this keycloak instance is going to be connecting to the database specified in that endpoint text file. And you can see here, I accidentally typed in 1511 instead of 1500. That's why I got that, you know, couldn't find an image because I didn't have that pulled yet. But now that I have this uh, updated to use 1500, I want you to notice here at the very top, it's actually using the PostgreSQL database. If you recall before, it was using the default H2 database that came with Keycloak. Also, if you notice here, uh, later in the logs, you, you will see this database URL, which is now referencing the Postgres endpoint. Um, so that's just another hint in the log saying that you're actually connecting to an external database, which is good. And now we'll just let the rest of the logs play out as it usually does. And now it's finished. Now the logs is finished, meaning that it's uh, successfully loaded up. So let's go ahead to localhost 8080. And if you recall, we had the same warning last time where we have to create a basically a master user. So we're going to go ahead and copy this command and do the same thing we did in the first video. And we are going to get the container ID of the running Keycloak container. Now we're going to just copy that command again from the GitHub page and we're going to replace the uh, container with the container ID and we're going to add sudo here as well and uh, we're going to update the username and password to be uh, the admin username password that we want to have then we're going to go ahead and hit enter and and notice here uh, that the user admin was added and we need to restart the server. So once again, we're going to go ahead and do the docker restart command. And let me just go ahead and copy the container ID again. And let's just look at the logs just to make sure we can tell when it's actually finished uh, starting up. Okay, now it's fully loaded up. And so if we refresh this page, just like before, now that warning goes away and we can actually access the login page. And if we go ahead and type in the username and password that we created, um, we'll actually be able to log in to this Keycloak instance. And the great thing is now that this information, at least that username, is in um, the external database now. So if this Keycloak instance goes down, you know, we can just spin one up in another location at another server. And, um, you know, as long as we give it the same endpoint credentials or the endpoint information for Postgres, then, you know, we can, you know, we'll, we'll have the data persisted. And that's it. So uh, thank you for watching this video. If you found it, you know, useful, helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you so much. I will continue again in the next video to actually show you how to connect an uh, application to Keycloak for you know login and verification purposes. So thank you once again.